right, you guys, welcome back to the show. Here we are in a very special FD Mazda RX-7. Belongs to a friend of ours, Joseph. Uh, Joseph's had this car for a long time. This is obviously his dream car. Uh, someone does not put this amount of time and effort into an FD if it is not your absolute dream car. Um, and it is built to hit the track and hit the track hard. <laughs> this is not a trailer queen. Uh, it's not a show car, it is a real driver's car. Obviously, we're on the right-hand side. Now, I don't know if actually, I don't know if Joseph imported this himself, but he has had it uh, since, I believe, around 2015. Guess how much Joseph paid for this car. Just guess, okay? All right, $8,000. <laughs> $8,000, okay? So this is a 93. FD3S, original turbo car. Woo! <laughs> it's got a street port on it. T4 turbo, front mount intercooler. And a Microtech ECU tuned by uh, our friends over in Abbotsford at Force Fed Racing, Marco over there. I haven't actually chatted with Marco in a while, but I did get my first MR2, or I think it was my second MR2, dynoed at Force Fed, just to kind of get a baseline. Uh, and they do specialize in rotary engines. And Joseph has nothing but good things to say about those guys. Uh, and the tune of this engine, and the reliability too. He got this tuned back in like 2015, 2016 and rebuilt back then. And it's still here on the road. He has not had to rebuild it since, okay? Which uh, is extremely contrary to what 99% of FD owners will tell you, you know? Hey, regardless of the one you bring in, you're going to have to rebuild the engine at some point. It's just a matter of when, right? So Joseph went ahead and did it kind of preemptively, so to speak, um, to make sure everything was in check before he started throwing more boost uh, at it and tried to squeeze a little bit more power out of it. So, I love Joseph's tire setup here. A really meaty setup. He's got Toyo R888. Open wastegate. Now you guys know, uh, but it's an incredibly meaty tire setup that he finds to be a little bit more uh, preferable with the FD on track. Um, and now the FD is a very small car. If you've never seen or kind of poked your head around an FD in person, uh, the car just kind of shrinks around you. It's a really small, tight Japanese motoring experience. Uh, with the T4 turbo and the bolt-ons and the you know open wastegate, full full exhaust, everything. Uh, he's got an HKS muffler on there, looks phenomenal. Uh, REM EMEA short shifter here, uh, as well as a few other really authentic JDM parts. He's got a Nardi steering wheel on here. Uh, it should be good for about 360 wheel horsepower. <laughs> really doesn't like partial throttle under boost. wrong about the tires though. <laughs> God, I love FDs. I love FDs so much. Ah, they literally never get old. Ooh, 350Z up here. Alright, real quick you guys, if you have not been over to roadsontravel.com, 
you're probably missing out. It's it's pretty much the place to be right now. As some of you guys know, we do already have quite a large collection of embroidered engine code jet tags up there. For the RX-7 fans, of course, if you're watching this video, we do have three RX-7 specific uh, products up right now. We've got all custom designs, and we will be coming out with a few new designs of our most popular uh, tags in the near future. But let's continue with Joseph's FD. We actually tried filming this car uh, three years ago um, in the winter time, dead of winter in 2017, and I was just stoked, uh, stoked to just be shooting cars and to be around all of my Japanese dream cars from my childhood, right? Uh, so I go out with Joseph one night, just him and I, and we shoot a video uh, just kind of in pit meadows around Golden Ears Bridge. I'll throw up a photo right now, a screenshot of some of the footage we got from that night. Um, as you can see, huge flames. <laughs> Joseph has since changed up the tune a little bit, so it does not shoot fire, and you're not gonna be really seeing much of that today, unfortunately. Um, but we shot the car, I got some footage, I got terrible nighttime in-car footage like this that did not turn out. It was pitch black, it was so bad. Um, but, oh, and another thing, actually, not fun either. Uh, I had a GoPro Hero 2 at the time, which a lot of our early videos that was used for, uh, and I put it on the side of the car or on the front fender, rear fender, when I was doing my in-car footage like I am now, just ripping the car around. And then I meet up with Joseph at the end of the run, and what do you know, the GoPro is not there. Gone. Uh, we spent the next probably half an hour backtracking through uh, the road to try and find it. The GoPro was never found. Now here in hindsight, totally fine. I mean, GoPro Hero 2, I wouldn't even, I don't even wanna watch the footage that was on uh, that GoPro at the time. But regardless, Joseph's a really cool guy and he's kept, luckily, his FD RX-7 for us to drive today. So. It's a great number, 360 is a great number. Uh, you know, 400 wheel would be nice too. Uh, but you know, 360 is plenty enough for a rotary here on the street. Uh, I mean, I would love, I will, I will absolutely own an FD one day in my life. Um, I just think, as far as a small package that keeps everything that we love about 90s Japanese cars, it really doesn't get much better than this. I mean, comparing it to an SW20 MR2, the steering's much sharper in this than that car. Uh, very close to what you would feel kind of from any generation Skyline GTR. Just, it has less compromise though because it's not all wheel drive, it's rear wheel drive. You're able to keep the weight down well under 3,000 pounds, probably even lighter now, probably closer to 2,600 pounds, 27, if I had to guess. <laughs> There's been a few cars that have come out in the last few years, uh, specifically the Toyota BMW Supra, that have kind of sparked this like almost gut reaction hate on the internet because I feel like people online initially when the Super came out kind of saw it as a an attack on the Japanese golden era like a, a way of almost cashing in on my childhood memories of these cars and our kind of JDM attachment to these awesome machines. But Mazda has not made a rotary powered sports car since the RX-8 ceased production in 2012. Um, now the RX-8, I drove one actually funny enough for the first time last week, just briefly, but Mazda has not actually stopped developing the rotary engine. They kind of just went dark for basically a 10 year period and now, as you guys probably saw a number of years ago, they announced the RX Vision concept 
uh, in Tokyo, which was basically a concept car showcasing what they could potentially do in the future with the rotary engine. So this makes me very excited and I really feel like we as the internet people and fans of JDM cars like this, manual transmission sports cars, actually have a bit of an influence on what these manufacturers will begin to come out with in the next few years. I think we might begin to see and I hope that the RX Vision will turn into kind of the beginning of a resurgence of a very niche segment of the sports car market being lightweight, two-seater, rear-wheel drive, manual sports cars. So let's get back in the FD and finish up the drive. Aggressive shifting, aggressive downshifting. Um, yeah, Joseph bought this for eight thousand dollars. I just came full circle. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no way you're getting one of these uh, left-hand drive or right-hand drive for even close to under ten thousand dollars now. Um, when I was looking at my R34, what eight months ago? Uh, you couldn't find one for under 25000 for a right-hand drive version. And uh, obviously, just inherently, people tend, here in North America, tend to want left-hand drive over right-hand drive, uh, so they pull a bit of a premium. But the right-hand drive ones, you couldn't get for under twenty five. And now I'm seeing um, some of the big importers in the States, such as Top Rank and a few other of the very reputable uh, import companies, looking for 30, 40, sometimes even $50,000 US uh, for a right-hand drive uh, factory turbo FD RX-7 model. Spirit R's especially, uh, Spirit R's and there's a couple other, you know, Mazda Speed. I know this one has the Mazda Speed badge on the back. It is not an authentic Mazda Speed, but anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Joseph's FD RX-7. Uh, I've, I've had an absolute blast today showing you guys this car. Uh, if you wanna follow Joseph on Instagram, definitely hit it up. Um, it's right here, the link is in the description as well. Uh, you can follow me at Roads and Travel there if you wanna just kinda see what we're shooting on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and yeah, if you're in the lower mainland, Vancouver, BC area, and you have a cool story, uh, on your modified car that you want to tell or you want me to check out your ride and see uh, what it's like to drive definitely shoot me a DM and we'll try to make it happen so subscribe if you haven't already hit the notification bell we'll see you guys soon